Hey, good morning, guys. It is Jen with Mother Time here on this Tuesday morning to do some live crafting with you. So as you are hopping on, say hello and let me know where you are chiming in from on this Tuesday morning. I'm going to take a second and pop you up here on my laptop. So good morning, guys. Let me say, say hello. Let, tell me that you can hear me. All that good stuff. I'm really fun, easy, of course, um, craft idea that I'm going to share with you. And I cannot wait to show you this method. I think you're going to love it. And you're going to get hooked on making these like I have. These are really, really fun to make. All right. We, I see here. Let's see. Let me just hear the sound. All right. We, I see here. All right. Awesome. Okay. Hello, Pamela. Good morning. How are you? It's what, nine o'clock in Illinois right now, right? So you guys are central, right? So hello, good morning, guys. How are you? So I'm super excited to show you this really cool idea. I'm just going to give it a second for everybody to pop on. Hi, good morning, Rebecca. How are you? Good morning. Good to see you guys. Hey, Sherry. Hi, hi, hi. Hello, Jen. Oh my gosh, you guys. I'm super excited about this craft, making sure I have everything out. So I have an awesome tip for you guys this morning before we get started too. Yes, it's nine o'clock. Okay, that's what I thought. Oh, <laughs> hey, friend, good morning. So have you ever gone to Hobby Lobby or you say you have to go to Hobby Lobby, maybe just for one thing, like you're low on Mod Podge. This is my example because this is what happened to me. So I always have multiple bottles of Mod Podge around. And I always usually have a backup of Mod Podge as well. You know, there, you can never have too much Mod Podge. Well, so normally what will happen, I'll say, oh, I just have to run to Hobby Lobby or Michael's or Joanne's, you know, any of those, and grab some Mod Podge. And then you end up going into the store and it's like an hour or two later and you're like, I just came in here for Mod Podge and I spent $100 and I got more than just the Mod Podge. Or better yet, you go in, you get everything else except the Mod Podge. How many times have you done that? Like you're like, I just have to run an errand and then you go in and you forget what you run in there for. So I have a solution for that. So that's what happened to me. I don't know why it took me this long to ever think of this. No, you know. So I tell Wayne, I say, listen, I'm low on my Mod Podge. I can't find my backup Mod Podge. Just, just send the husband. Just send the husband. He was in and out and back from Hobby Lobby in 25 minutes. I'm like, I just usually walk in the door 25 minutes. How did you do that? So I hope you're doing well too, Rebecca. Hey, Marshall, how are you? Oh my gosh. So if you ever need just like that, like one or two things at Hobby Lobby and you know it's like a trap, like they really need to have like a danger sign at Hobby Lobby, don't they? Like danger, enter with caution. So if that ever happens to you, don't go, don't go. Because you know, I have no willpower when I go into Hobby Lobby. Just, just grab me, you know, just say, Send, send the husband. He was in and out, got me two things of Mod Podge, didn't walk out with any seasonal decor, no pumpkins, no bells. My like, gosh, why did I, why have I, why is it taking me this long to think about that? So tip of the day, you guys, <laughs> tip of the day. And you know what the funny thing is too, is I don't think I'm going to need the Mod Podge, but you know, better to be safe than sorry. Um, and I'm probably going to find the one that I wanted afterwards. So enough little chit chat there. I just thought that was a funny little story. Oh, uh, hello, Diane. Good morning. Good to see you guys on this Tuesday morning. All right. So what we're going to be doing again today is I'm going to show you how to make a lit primitive label jar. You can see this one behind me is one that I've already made. Which way am I going? Right here. See it? Isn't it cute tucked in all of that stuff? You guys, wait till I show you how stinking easy. Yes, Sherry, very true. It's so true. Oh gosh, I cannot go in there. And a lot of times I'll hop on stories when I'm at Hobby Lobby and I'll chit chat with you guys and show you everything that's there. You know, all the Christmas and fall stuff's already coming out. But I'm like, next time I just need those few things. And the best thing was is, you know, Thankfully, there's, you know, FaceTime. So he literally walked in the door. He's like, where do I go? I'm like, just turn me around. So I still was essentially in Hobby Lobby, but the temptation was not there. So he was able to, like, go right here. He couldn't find the Mod Podge, and I was trying to explain where it was. I saw a girl there. I said, just ask her. It was right behind him, actually. I said, grab me two, and out the door he went. 
But the funny thing is, is I probably will be in Hobby Lobby in a little bit. So much. I just, oh, so goofy, you guys. All right. So anyways, you're going to want a jar, any kind of jar. Now, I really prefer the, just the flat jars. Of course, you can use a ball jar, any kind of jar. But, you know, if you can get your hands on just a nice, smooth jar, this is a jar from Dollar Tree. They smell, they smell. They smell, they sell these jars that don't have anything on it. So it makes it a lot easier when you're working with, you know, fun little projects like what we're gonna be doing today. This one I actually had in my stash. It was a ball jar and it just has, you know, the little ball um, down on the bottom, like the engraving. Um, you know, some of the jars do well, like here, for example, you know, have a lot more going on. And while you can still work with them, you know, you're going to get those imprints while you're doing these projects, especially like the one that I'm going to show you today. So a good way to overcome that is just try to find yourself smooth jars. They sell them at Hobby Lobby too. Uh, but you can, um, oh, see, yeah, Rebecca, good thing. So Hobby Lobby around you, yes. The temptation's not there. That's it. That is very true. Yeah, it's very difficult to walk in that store. And it's funny because I'm not, like, when I walk in, sometimes another lady will kind of walk in and she'll, like, make a little sticker, like, oh, I'm in trouble. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, be warned. Like, it's it's just, it's always fun. I always, and I meet some of you guys in Hobby Lobby, too, believe it or not. One time I was in line. Oh, and she was like, I recognize, she recognized my voice. And usually when I'm at Hobby Lobby, it's like, you know, sweatpants, you know, yoga pants. And I'm just like, you know, I usually just dropped off the kids at school. All right, so you're not going to need the lid for this. And again, you can see which way am I right here, what we're going to be making. But you guys, wait till you see this method of how I'm going to be making it. You're going to get hooked on making these. So you can go on Etsy and find all these labels. Now, if you caught my YouTube video on Saturday, I shared how I made the, which way am I going? I can't do, I can't look at myself. Right here is the one um, project that I did with the label. Over here is the honey one. Down here is the basket. Well, anyways, I used these labels. And the thing of it is, is I don't want to waste the extra labels I have. Well, one of the other labels that I had will be on a YouTube video coming up. Wait till you see that project. But there was two still left over. And I don't like wasting these things. So I'm going to use them for these jars. I did use one on the... i got to stop pointing. <laughs> I can't even do it. Over there. Uh, Marshall's... TJ Maxx, Hobby Lobby, yeah, they need to have danger signs on all, all of them. So I'm going to use these labels. I want to obviously use what I have. So, and then you're going to need a jar. And for this project, you're going to need brown parchment paper. Yes. So you're going to need parchment paper, but you need like the brown, the brown parchment paper. This is the one I, this is the one that I use. So this is what you're going to want for this. This is so easy, and wait till you see how it turns out. Hey, Lisa, good morning. How are you, my friend? All right, so you're going to cut yourself a piece of... Now, this is a little bit of a leftover scrap that I had. This is also a good project. You know when you um, you maybe cut a piece of parchment paper to cut up, you know, bake some cookies, and you always have, like, that little extra pieces? Don't throw it out. Save it for these little jars. So if you have, like, I know when I cut my parchment paper out, I always have, like, little scraps. Don't throw them out. Save those little ones. These, you, you can do so many little things with these. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna take some Mod Podge. Now, if you can see in these jars, these jars are pretty, <laughs> pretty dirty because what I like to do is I add some of my instant coffee into the Mod Podge and it tints it. Now this one's actually kind of dark. I'm gonna add some of my regular, um, just plain old Mod Podge into it just to lighten it up a little bit. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna just, now what I like to do is when you get your instant coffee for a lot of your grunting projects, it's going to be very coarse. It's a coarse, um, crummy instant coffee. What I like to do is I will put some of it in my little mini, um, food processor you guys this one that I've had for gosh I've had it for about 30 years it's I love that thing if it, anything ever happens to it I don't know what I'm going to do I take a little bit of it and I grind it up so now it's nice a nice fine instant coffee 
Then I add some cinnamon to it as well. The ratio, you guys, I just eyeball it. Next time I make a batch, I will give, be more specific and I can let you know. But I just then take a scoop of cinnamon once this is all ground up. So it's a nice, fine, ground, instant coffee. And I stick that into my Mod Podge. And I'm just gonna mix it up. And then you get, you know, a nice colored Mod Podge. And it just kind of tints everything a little bit. So this one is obviously pretty dark. That's what's already in there. So I just wanted to show you that. So I always have a separate jar of a finely ground, um, finely ground coffee that also includes some cinnamon as well. I'm just gonna lighten this one up a little bit too. I added too much of my grounds in there. Um, so it was a little dark. Hey, Suzanne. Good morning. Hey, Sherry. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you, my friend. So I like to try to keep my Mod Podge that I want to keep for other things away from the one that I get all grungy in. So I'm just mixing it up so you can kind of see. It's still going to be a little dark, but that doesn't bother me. But again, you're just going to take some Mod Podge, add some of that finely ground now you could use the regular regular one too but I like to do the finely ground because it kind of just melts right into it and then again you're going to get this nice brown caramely looking Mod Podge so I'm just mixing that up now you could use if you don't want to color it you do you you guys you don't have to but wait till you see how it turns out <laughs> it's worth it so I don't need my, I got to keep that away because I also get into, you know, when I'm really getting into my stuff and then sometimes I will dip into that one and then, you know, with my older mixture and then it's like, oh, so I try to keep them away from each other so I don't have the temptation. So you're going to grab your jar again. This one is from Dollar Tree. Any jar will work, but if you can get a nice smooth one, it's just better to work with. Your project's going to come out better. Hey, good morning, Rita. How are you? So now I'm going to take my, this is just a scrap. So again, when you have, you're just popping on, use those scraps. I'm going to cut it down just a hair, just a hair, because we're going to, you know, push it around too. And I like to, I like to have a little bit more because you can always cut it down than not having enough. And then you're, you know, so actually I want to go right here. So we're just gonna cut it down just, just a smidge. I hate cutting it down too much. But you can always trim it down. All right, that should be good enough. Let me make sure this one has enough to go around too. Just fits, you guys, just fits. This was just a scrap that I had. Don't throw out those scraps. Don't waste those scraps. And I'm just going to kind of had a little bit of a rough edge. Let me make sure it'll still go around. Howdy, Dawn, how are you? Thank you so much. How are you? So now I cut it and now it's a little, let's see. I want to make sure that it's going to go around my project without any gaps. See, now I cut it too much. See? That one is just going to fit, you guys. Just going to fit. Almost tempted to just... I mean, it is like a perfect seam if, as long as it goes on well. So I'm not going to move that. All right, so now I'm going to take my... My Mod Podge. Again, you can use Mod Podge or just clear if you want. And I'm just going to put a coat of Mod Podge on my jar. All the way around. Wait till you see how this turns out. Hey, Teresa. Good morning from Michigan. How are you? So this is just my tinted Mod Podge with the coffee. And I'm just gonna add a little bit here too. Because even if my um, parchment doesn't go all the way around, that's fine, or underneath. At least it'll kind of tint it a little bit. And we're gonna go in and, and seal it up really well too. All right. And now, I'm gonna go on with the parchment and I'm just going to roll my jar 
Oh my gosh, just, I mean, you couldn't have gone any, any closer, any closer. Look at that, I like just made it with that seam, just made it. Oh, and then you're just gonna smooth it out. Just finger press it. Yay! I'm so happy you called me live, Alicia, how are you? All right, and then I'm going to press it down. We'll probably turn some of that excess off. So again, this is just your brown parchment paper. I'm gonna just trim off a little bit on the bottom. So I want it to go around, but not, it's, you know, I don't want it to get too bulky. See, I'm just kind of pleating it as I go around. We're gonna add some Mod Podge too. This is parchment paper. Just a roll of your brown parchment paper that I am wrapping around the jar. And then I'll just trim a little bit off here too. So don't throw those scraps out of parchment paper when you're baking cookies or you're putting a piece of parchment paper down because you're gonna want that for projects like this. And just like that, you have a pretty kind of cool jar, but we're not done with it yet. We are far from done with it. If you can see right back here, again, and we're trying to do the little toe, there's one right behind me too that I've already made. So you'll be able to see how I make that. So you can make these yourself. They're so fun. Oh, thank you, Carol, you're so sweet. Have you ever recycled your coffee filters with ground on it? That's an excellent idea, I have not. I love that idea. See, that's a really good idea. So there is my jar. We're gonna add a coat of the Mod Podge on top of it as well, but before I do that, I want to be able to add my label. So again, this is part of the label collection that I got that made the two um, things behind me, the honey and the molasses. Then there is a butter one that you'll see on a YouTube video that I'm gonna be using. Um, there is this one. I, I'm done pointing, you guys. <laughs> Right here is, that one is baking powder. So these were the other two labels left in the collection. Now I printed these on sticker paper. Feel free to, you don't have to use sticker paper. You could just use regular copy or, uh, or cardstock as well. But I printed these on sticker paper just to, you know, I had sticker paper, why not, right? So I'm gonna stick this one, I'm just deciding if I wanna do the cinnamon sticks or the flour. Cinnamon sticks or flour. I'm gonna do the flour one, it's just a little bit bigger. So I'm just gonna cut that out. I'll include a link in stories for this label collection. Um, but you can also find it on my latest YouTube video too in the description. So if you wanna grab these labels yourself. All right. So I'm gonna find where my seam is. Save cinnamon sticks for another. I'm gonna do another jar. I love doing these jars, you guys. Oh, they're fun. All right, so I'm gonna find where my seam is. Again, my perfect seam. I mean, that was just like perfect because I wanna obviously put my label in front. I don't, I always am mindful of where my labels are. I hate when they're, you know, like right there. Even like when I go to the store and I'm buying something, I always make sure the label is proper, you know, especially like Dollar Tree, sometimes those things get in the weird positions. All right, so I have my little sticky flower label. Again, you don't need to use um, sticker paper. You can just use regular paper, but because I already had these printed out, and now I'm just gonna go a little bit on the downside. I'm not gonna go completely center. So we can add uh, cheesecloth to the top of it. And now I'm just gonna press my label down like that and hold it down. And that's why sticker paper is kind of fun. So there is my label attached to my jar. And again, you can use any size jar. This one's a little bit of a bigger one I had in my basement. 
Um, Hobby Lobby always has tons of jars too. But again, I, I like to use the smoother jars. So if you have some from, you know, different things that you cook with, you can use those too. All right, so now we're gonna add a coat of Mod Podge on top of it as well. So again, you're gonna grab your coffee Mod Podge. This is where it's gonna get really cool. This is now where the fun begins, you guys. And I'm gonna now go over and I'm gonna add that coffee Mod Podge on top. And this coffee Mod Podge, again, also has the little cinnamon, so you can see the little specks. But I'm also going to add some on top as well. But I'll show you what I'm gonna do. So I'm adding my coat. I'm going over my label as well. And if you see any of your um, parchment paper still standing up, you can just easily press that down onto the Mod Podge. I think I got a little bubble right here. Get down there, you. So I'm just gonna go around my jar really quick, underneath as well. Make sure you get a nice coating of that on there. And then we're gonna add something else, but this jar is not done yet. This is just another layer to this really cool jar. And again, there's one behind me too that's already done. And once you make one, you're gonna keep wanting to make them because they're lots, they're a lot of fun to make. And really fun, you know, think for the holidays and everything too. So I'm just making sure it's all pressed down. Like that. Did I add coffee to my Mod Podge? I did, So, but I take like a finely ground instant coffee. So I take some of my regular instant coffee and I just put it in my food processor and grind it down so it's a nice fine grind. And then it's, so it's more like powdery and I also incorporate cinnamon into that. So there is my jar. Now while my Mod Podge is still wet, I'm going to take some more of my coffee and add it around the jar. So I'm gonna add my finely ground. I'm just gonna add a little scoop just so I'm not dipping in there. So I have my finely ground instant coffee that has the cinnamon incorporated. I'm gonna take a little bit of my mixture onto my brush and I'm just going to lightly brush it in spots. You can go as heavy or as light as you want. You might maybe just want to do it in certain spots. So while that Mod Podge is still wet, you're just incorporating that on. I like to get it around the label. It creates a really cool texture. Older it looks, the better. Awesome, yes, Nancy, awesome. So again, I just have my, and then I like to just kind of pat it around like that. Dip a little bit more into my Mod Podge. Brush around it too. You could add some cinnamon too. See how it's coming along like that? Isn't that cool looking? Then I'm just going to use my dryer to, and you'll see the magic happen. Look at how cool this looks. So it has that tinted brownish color from not only the parchment paper, but also from the Mod Podge. And again, I just keep it in a separate container. Oh, it smells amazing. It really does. It smells so good. And with that cinnamon too, between the bows. So now I'm gonna take some and I'm gonna lump it around in other parts, like right here, especially around the front. So I'm just because I don't wanna waste that coffee that I poured out. And I just kinda 
the messier the better. <laughs> I feel like I say the more caked on the better, but really, truly. And that the it's going to adhere to the Mod Podge, so that's why you want to do it while it's still wet. So I'm just, I'm just not, I'm just using more. I mean, I probably would say this some, but just because I got that out. Oh, this looks so good. I love it. All right, so now I'm gonna take, so that's how it looks. What do you guys think? Isn't that cool? So now I'm going to, oh, that's a good idea to save even the labels. That's a great idea. So now I'm gonna just take my hair dryer and add some, my hair dryer to it. And that'll just speed it up too. It's a nice warm day. You can just set it outside and let it bake in the sun. That's always a fun idea too. Um, but you know, if you want to speed it up, if you have, I don't usually have patience to wait. And the sun will really speed it up. And this isn't as a baking, like when I do my cinnamon Mod Podge, where you do want to, you know, let it sit a little bit longer. Um, this one will speed up really quick. So I'll just grab my dryer and I'm just going to dry it for a second. Very rustic, yeah. Then we're going to add some lights in it. I mean, you don't even have to add lights. I want to make a bunch of them for my um, shelves above my coffee bar. So I may, plan on making a bunch of these. And I don't plan on lighting every one up. You know, the lights are cool, but you know, some of them you might not want to have lit up because it's just really kind of cool just like this. It's part of my label there was bubbling up just a little bit. But look at like right here, how cool that looks too. Yes, it would look really pretty with the Sweet Annie. So that's a great idea too. You could actually use this as like a, a vase as well, which I'm thinking that would be really pretty too. Seeing what I got over that I can easily grab. So yeah, that's a great idea. I love that. Making these and having them just as a vase. I'd like a bigger one even too. The one that I'm doing for the YouTube, well that's going to be more grungy. I found a really cool glass bottle when I was thrifting the other day. That's what I'm going to use the, um, I'm going to be doing that one a little bit. So we're just going to let it dry for another minute. Gal loves it right now. So, oh, I love it too. There's just something so homey and just, I love it. I love it so much. But look at how great this texture looks on here. Just gonna hit this little spot. And it, it's fun to do. It's a lot of fun. And the thing about primitive, it's not, you know, everything's it's supposed to look primitive. So there's really no, you know, the grungier, the better. That's why I like to really cake it on, add layers. But do you see how with the parchment paper, you can still kind of see through it just a smidge? I mean, it's still a little tacky, but you know, it'll, it'll dry. So now, look at how pretty that is. Where am I? Where am I? Isn't it? I mean, my, I have a light over here but you can kind of see how cool that is. I love this spot right here. I love that little spot, isn't that funny? It's like the little spots I love. You know. Have to watch for the beginning. Oh, Jill, yes, afterwards catch the, you can watch the whole thing. Hey, Sherry, we're leaving for the beach tomorrow. Let's see, am I back on? Are we back on? All right, so sing. Somebody was beeping in. Let's see, make sure we're back on. I think we are. 
I think we're, yeah, we are. Okay. We're back on. <laughs> Somebody was calling in and I swiped it out. All right. This looks so good. All right, you guys. So now that's pretty dry. So now you can grab some lights. We're going to add some lights. We're going to add some um, muslin on top of it. Or not muslin. I'm not doing muslin today. Well, I have muslin on. I also have some cheesecloth. We're going to do a little bit of a homespun ribbon around it too. Not homespun ribbon. So these are just battery operated lights that I love. I share them often in my um, back on. Oh yes, back on. Yeah, that 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 call stops it a little bit. And I love these because it's got so many. Oops, what did I do? I hit the little button off of it. Now I hit the little button on it. Oh, there we go. It's got different little functions. We'll put the button back on. We're just gonna go with the steady. There we go. I get these at a local shop. I, I get asked about these a lot. For these same particular ones, I've only been able to find them on eBay. Now, you could obviously use fairy lights as well, but sometimes with fairy lights, I gotta be honest with you, don't have that really, really warm glow. They're more of that bluish tint, or they're not as bright. I love these because I love the brightness of them. I also love the functions of them. And um, I, just, I just love them. <laughs> I just love them. So these are my go-to. I have a ton of them. Let me make sure we're back on here. All right. Yay. Okay, good. Good. So I'm just going to add some lights. Now, again, you don't have to add the lights, but lights just make them more, makes it more fun. but you could use fairy lights as well. You could even use electric lights too if you wanted to, you know, like a string of lights. But look at how cool that looks. Doesn't that look awesome? Now, you could, now for this particular one, my battery pack does not fit in. If I was using a larger jar, my battery pack would probably fit in and I would probably stick the battery pack at the bottom of it. I mean, every, you know, couple, I'd have to change you know, the batteries, and then you've got to kind of, you know, fiddle with it. So what I like to do is I'll just keep the battery pack on the back of it, you know, and I'll tuck that in. You don't see the battery pack on, you don't see the battery pack on this one, you know, so uh, you just kind of hide it. Um, so, but if you had a smaller fairy light that had a smaller battery pack, for sure, you could stick it in there. But the thing of it is, is then anytime you have to change the batteries, you're going to have to make, you know, take it all apart to just simply change batteries. It's just easy to do it this way. Where am I? See how cool that looks? I just love that glow. I just love that glow. It looks so great. So I did that one with some cheesecloth, but you could use muslin as well. Are these printables? Hey, Denise, how are you? They are, they're the same printables I used on my recent YouTube video. So it's in the description on my YouTube video, but I'll also post a link to them after in stories as well too. You could do like a coffee stain muslin. But again, for the, that one over there, I did do, it's so cozy looking, it is. I did do some muslin. Now I like this muslin because it's already kind of, a, it's an unbleached cheesecloth. That's what I meant to say, not muslin. This is cheesecloth, it's unbleached. I get it at Hobby Lobby. So if you want the unbleached, so it's already, you know, it's not that, you know, pure white. Now, of course you can coffee stain cheesecloth just like you would with the muslin too. And so I'm just gonna cut out a chunk. You're welcome, Denise. I'm gonna cut a, a chunk of my cheesecloth. And the reason I'm not using coffee stained cheesecloth is this is also coffee stained too. So, you know, I wanna kinda just, um, oh, Dorothy, I'm so happy you did. I just kinda wanna break up the, the, you know, I don't need to have, as much as I love everything, coffee stained and grungy looking. I figured, you know, this, this can be without it. This can be without it. So I'm just gonna take a piece of the cheesecloth and put it, just drape, drape it on top. Let me make sure my hot glue is going because we're gonna put on a little button too. Again, I make sure my battery pack is in the back. We're draped. 
Now I'm going to take a piece of homespun, which I get at Hobby Lobby. So I'm just going to tear a little piece. I'm just going to cut a about a half inch and I just tear it. And then I'm just going to tie it around the top of my cheesecloth. I'm wondering if I should have maybe made that just a smidge smaller. No, we're good. We're going to make it work. I'm just taking that. We're going to trim down that cheesecloth here in just a second too. It's not going to look so drapey. I just like to always work with a smidge more and then cut it down than not having too much. Oh, this is just so cute. So cute. And I like to fluff it up a little bit too. So that's how it's looking. Now we're going to trim it down a little bit. Hello, Jody. How are you? And then again, like I said, if you have the battery pack, if you use like a fairy light too or a battery pack that would fit in the jar, then you got to take this apart every time. And who wants to always fiddle with that? Because you know what ends up happening when you do that? You just don't do it. You know, you end up like, oh, it was cute while it lasts. And you just don't take the time. So I just, I'd much rather have it out. Easy to change. I'm just going to go around, trim off that excess muslin. I can hide the battery pack easily. So I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered with it. You could even use a battery operated tea light. You could even take one of these lights. That would fit in there too. But again, you're going to have to always then change the lights. The only way you would not change the lights is if you used like um, a, an electric strand, which you could do too, then you wouldn't have, but you're going to still have that cord coming out. Good morning from sunny Oregon. Sunny Oregon. It's sunny here too. It's quite beautiful. We had such a hot week last week and it's more reasonable this week. More, more what <laughs> the temperatures I like. I don't like it too hot. I don't like the heat. So this is just again, unbleached cheesecloth, which you can get at Hobby Lobby. You could coffee stain it too, but again, I just didn't want to have, I wanted something that did not have the coffee stain on it to kind of break up the coffee stain that's on the, and now I'm going to trim off the excess homespun. Just trim it a little bit more. And I do have my cheesecloth pulled it up a little bit. You know, it's a double layer. Look how cute that's coming along. Isn't that darling? And how easy, how easy. If you saw this at a prim store, which there's a couple in my area that I love going to, they would easily be charging you, you know, at least $20, if not more. Now, you know, between the lights itself, probably a little bit more. It's so cute. Yeah, I like having the battery pack out. You could just hide it a little bit. So now I think I'm gonna add, I was gonna add some moss, but I think I'm gonna do the little bit of the greenery again on this one. So this is just that um, pretty garland from Hobby Lobby. So easy to just rip off. You can just rip it with your hand. I just like to tuck it in because I can easily change it. So I have some greens in there right now because it's summer or almost technically summer. But come fall, I can change it and add maybe more of a fall little pick. And of course, Christmas, I can add some Christmas greens because this is not, you know, this is just an everyday flower label. So if I easily want to change it out to incorporate in my decor, if I had this hot glued on, I'm kind of a little bit more committed. Of course, you can still pull it out. It's hot glue. It's not permanent. But I like to just stick it in. So come fall and Christmas, I can easily change out the greenery if I choose to. Or if I want to just take it off and, you know, and I can then add something more seasonal. So this can be, an, you know, 
year round decoration just by simply changing out the greens, you know, in the pick. So that's why I kind of like to just kind of find a spot and stick it in. Yeah, I'm gonna do that with my coffee bar shelves too. That's why I kind of started making these. I was like, this is just so fun. And I'm like, these are gonna be really cute on my coffee bar. So that's the same thing I'm gonna do too. And they're so easy. I mean, they're just, they're so easy. They're so customizable. But I like just sticking the greens in. The cheesecloth makes it easy to stick in. And then you can just change it out. I so hope you love it, Stephanie. Yeah, I love, I really, when I made this up one, I was like, oh, I cannot wait to show them. I can't wait to show them. They're gonna love it. So I'm just sticking some of the, the greens in here. Again, this is that really kind of wispy. Um, I used it on my porch in the spring too. So if you caught where I took the garland, it's like $15.99, then you can get it on sale for 40% off. I'm so, oh, so bummed when I found, like why is it now 40% off? Why can't they just keep it 50% off when they go on sale too? So it's so annoying, but now it's 40%. At one point in the good old days, it was 50%, right? And now I'm gonna take a button, big old, big old jar of buttons, which I get at, um, you can get these, like this big jar of buttons. I mentioned this a lot at Walmart. And I'm gonna add a button onto here too. Yes, you'll have to catch the beginning because it's just so fun. And I'll do a little recap at the end too. So you can kind of, I'll give a quick little recap too in case you missed that. And then you can go back. And now I'm just adding a little button on top of the homespun too. Oh, you guys. Oh, now you're gonna see why I'm like love making these. And they're so easy. Look at how darling this turned out, you guys. Look at it with the little button and the little pop of greenery. And you can see the glow. Isn't it so pretty? And that grungy texture is back here. Look at that, I love that nice little clumpy one. Isn't it pretty? Oh, my mom's house, isn't it beautiful? And it's such a charming town too. She's got a beautiful, beautiful home. She's got a lot of collections. She's got a lot of stuff. That's why she's having a garage sale. She's garage sale every year. Yes, she, and I, I took some stuff down to hers, too. We helped set them up. Because it takes her literally all week long. It takes her all week long to set up for a garage sale. So she started yesterday. But I just love that texture right there. Don't you love that? Oh, it's the little things, you guys. So cute. But like you guys were mentioning, too, about putting this on a coffee bar or in your kitchen. It's a cute little nightlight, too. I'll pop on stories too without this this light. And I did dim the, my little ring light a little bit too, just so, you know, it wasn't so bright because it makes me hot. Um, but isn't that darling? Isn't that darling? I just love it so much. Such a great idea. And again, the using the battery operated battery, you can then easily, you'll, you'll be more inclined to switch it out when the batteries go, but you can also change the mode. So if you want to have more of a flicker, I love these lights. I wish they sold them where I could be able to let you know. I get them just at a local shop. So you can even change the modes. That was a little much. I just like, I just like this study. So that is how that turned out, you guys. And again, you could even use a little light. So again, if you're just popping on after this is over, I will, you'll be able to catch the replay. But I just used a nice, smooth jar. You can find them at Dollar Tree. You can, you know, have them around your house. I tend to recommend just doing the smoother jars just because you're not gonna see all of the, all the stuff. Dollar Tree has them, Hobby Lobby has them. And then what I did to give it this really cool look is brown parchment paper. Oops, upside down, I'm sorry. 
The brown parchment paper is what you're gonna want. But again, don't, if you, when next time you bake some cookies and you pull some parchment paper out and you had to trim it off a little bit, if you have, you know, a nice little chunk of it, save that little chunk, don't throw it out. It's, you know, you can make a cute little craft like this with it. Then once we did is I took some of my Mod Podge that I add a little bit of my finely ground instant coffee in, mixed it up to give a really nice color too. So it's got more of like that caramel color. And I mix it up and that's what I used to attach the parchment paper to it. And then after that, I add a coat of Mod Podge on top. And then I also take some of that finely ground cinnamon to add like these really nice chunkiness to it. Hey, Stephanie. And um, then I just took a piece of my cheesecloth, added a little bit of homespun, some of this little bit of greens, a cute little button, of course, because you know I'm all about a cute little button. And of course, some lights, but you don't have to add the lights. And you have a really darling light. This is super cute for a nightlight too. Super duper cute for a nightlight. And you can see how nicely it glows. You could use, you could use fairy lights too. You do you. I love these lights. If I can ever find a source and get them, I will get a ton and I will add them to my shop because I love them. Right now, I just get them from a local shop. So that is how this, oops, so sorry. That's how that turned out. What do you guys think? Let me know what you think. I just, I love it. So I will show you guys in stories. I'll pop on stories too. Show it to you without the glow. Show you how it looks all styled. But I just think this is super fun. If you guys make one too, you know I always love to see what you guys are making. Make sure you, you know, tag me here so I can share it as well. You can share me over on Instagram or over here on Facebook because I always love to see your creations when you guys recreate these things as well. And of course, if you ever have any questions, you can just shoot me a DM too and help me or and I'd be happy to help. And I'll also do a blog post on this too. Hey, Chicken Piggins, how are you? Oh, Pamela's making one. I can't wait to see it. And I'll include a link as well after in stories too for the labels in case you've missed that too. Oh, this was so fun. Another double couch shirt. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, I'd love to see. Yeah, see, I will, I'm going to do a tour in the uh, Christmas. She's already planning for it. She's already planning for a house here. She's got, it's a very, very quaint town. Uh, Westfield, New York is so quaint. It's just, it's very like almost hallmarky. You know, it's just got cute little shops, cute little antique stores. Um, very, very nice. You need to add one of these to your collection, yes. Oh, Rebecca, I'm so happy you love it too. And just so easy, so easy. You would think something like this, you go, oh my gosh, how do I make that, how do I get it? And when you realize what you, the few supplies that you need to make them, and you could really start an assembly line and you know knock out a lot of these really quick. And how cute, I know some people may hate me saying this, but how cute for Christmas gifts, you know? And they have, I have um, saved with my Etsy some really cute Christmas labels. We'll have to do a Christmas one too, but you could even do an everyday one. But how cute for Christmas gifts or just for an everyday gift or a birthday gift or just to brighten somebody's day. You know what I mean? I just love it. So anyways, you guys, this was just so much fun. Live crafting with you. And again, if you're just catching on now, you'll be able to watch the replay later on and I'll pop on stories and show you include all of those links and everything too. And I'll be on, let's see, Saturday as a YouTube. I'm going to try to go live again later this week as well. Um, so we can do some more live crafting with you guys. So anyways, you guys, thank you so much for spending some time with me on this Tuesday morning. I hope you have a very blessed day. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Talk to you guys later. Bye guys.